Today, we are going to be making a really pretty double embossed slimline card. Hello everybody, I'm Joanne Rogers. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Central Alberta, Canada, and I've been designing with you in mind since 1999. So I chose two stamps out of here. I chose uh, this one right here, and I also chose this guy. So I wanted two stamps that had lots of nice, lots of air around them, and I also chose the best is yet to come. So we're going to use our Versamark stamp pad, and we are going to stamp on top of just two of these, I think. So you're going to ink up your stamps. You can ink up both of them at the same time. And if I'm going to do this one and this one here, well, I might even do this one. Uh, we are going to just stamp right over top. Now we're going to need to ink each time we want to stamp. And this is the hardest part to this one is you have to turn, you can't see it. I know you can't see it from where you're looking, but I can barely see where my stamp is. So I'm going to stamp it again right here. So then I'm going to stamp this guy here. I'm using just a different stamp just to get a different feel for it. Stamp right over top. And I'm going to leave that one for just a moment. You could take it out first. If you wanted to do this and take it out first, you could do that because I'm trying to be careful that I don't touch my Versamark. We'll leave that over there for just a moment. I'm going to put my tweezers and hold on to it. As I have mixed together a little bit of copper embossing powder and gold embossing powder. Okay, I'm going to sprinkle this over top. I'm just going to tap it off. And what we're left with is a little bit of decoration on our butter that I'm going to pick up the other one with. I have to hold these ones though. They're not the self holding ones. I'm now sure. if I wanted, I could put a little bit more uh, stamping there, but I'm going to say that that's pretty good. I want really a delicate look here. So I'm just taking in my little paintbrush. And my paintbrush is just, it's a really disreputable one where I've just taken and really made it sort of pointy. It's an old one. I don't certainly don't use it for painting anymore. Put this back into my container. So this is what you can do at home if you don't have a containers and then just slide that in and give it a little tap. We're going to use our heat tool and we can use our heat tool on the number two setting. So as most of you know, this is the Stampin' Up! heat tool. It has a little leg that it'll stand on. It has plastic across the top so that we won't burn our fingers on that metal uh, spout in there. And then it has two different settings. One that I tend to use for vellum and the other that we're going to use just like regular. So I'm going to hit number two now and heat that up. And I'll just take a moment to get to full temperature. And then I'm going to point it directly at my butterfly. And I can point it at my silicone craft sheet because it can withstand the heat. Can you see it changing color there? So we're just getting a delicate little pattern all over our butterflies. I'm just going to take a quick look. I'm not quite cooked everywhere. So, so something you can always want to check after you have done your um, embossing, just make sure that it's all shiny. And all of this is shiny, but I can see that right there is not shiny. So give that another little hit with your heat tool. Now you can also overheat those. So you want to just be careful you don't overheat them. When you overheat, you'll see that it just sinks right into the paper and it loses all its shine. So let's do this guy too. Light. Okay, so there's two very pretty ones. So just pull it out. I tend to hold on to the butterfly with my dominant hand and very gently pull and hold on to the paper with my, um, no, with my non-dominant and dominant, sorry. So now what we're going to do is we are going to cover this completely with Versamark. Okay, so I'm going to try and hold it down. We're going to do the same thing. Pull this in. If I were to put that onto my silicone craft sheet right now, I would have a whole bunch of embossing powder on that Versamark. So I'm just going to sprinkle it on. It's going to go everywhere, hopefully. I'm creating a foil uh, element that's going to go right onto my card. I'm going to tap that off and I'm going to put that back into my holder. So I'm yeah. going to heat it up. 
And you'll see how pretty this goes. And how quickly it goes as well. Okay, so now we have our butterfly. When I take off my tweezers, I have a little bit of a white spot. You know what? I think I'm going to hide that with something a little later. Okay, so here's our mat. And we're going to use the Thoughtful Moments hybrid embossing folder and the dies. So here it is. And we're going to use Celebrate. So I'm going to show you. When I showed you before, I think a couple weeks ago, we made our uh, Easter card. And I showed you the whole piece of paper. Well, let's not do the whole piece of paper this time. Instead, let's do just a little piece. So this is quite a large piece. So I'm going to use Celebrate. So I'm just going to take my paper snips and I'm just going to cut that off. And this is just a, um, this is just a piece of scrap that I have. And that's going to sit in there right underneath the Celebrate. Okay, it doesn't have to sit anywhere particular. Let me see if I can actually get with sympathy at the same time. I think it might be just a little bit too small. Yeah, it is. Okay, so there's our rose gold inside there. Pull in our stamp and cut and emboss. Now, we have to make sure because this isn't a 3D embossing folder, we don't want our regular setup. So we want to take off these guys and we want to look at what do we need for our regular setup. And our regular setup, let me turn it around the right way for you, our regular setup with the 3D embossing folder uses this platform, our piece with the embossing folder, piece of paper that is, and then the gray one. So let me grab my gray one. Here. It's right here. But we need to do something else first. So first, what we need to do is pull in the dies that cut this out at exactly the same time. So I'm going to pull this off of here and the celebrate is down here. The, the dies go on the left side of the embossing folder and they will fit right in. And this happened last time too. There we go. So it fits and it almost snaps right in place. Oh, you can't see that. I'm sorry. So it almost snaps right in place. So let me pull this out again. Make sure our celebrate is in and our paper is in the right place. And let me turn this over so we have our paper, we have our Celebrate. Now, I can see my paper's not quite in the right place. So let me pull that over just a little bit more. Boy, I was not super generous on my paper. There we are. Okay, so now we're going to put the whole thing through with the gray over top. I'm sorry if you missed a little bit of that. I apologize. Okay. Uh, is this carrying over? Yes. The, the thoughtful moments, Jennifer? Yes, it is. So now I'm going to run that through my stamp and cut and emboss machine. And it's going to make lots of nice noise for us. And then when it comes out, this is almost, oh, I don't know. I was about to say this might be one of my favorite ways to use this because it will give you huge embossing on that piece. And it does come out of here. It's just stuck there. Okay. So there is our Celebrate, which is just a beautiful Celebrate. I really, okay. So what do we have? We have our Celebrate. We have our butterflies. Now we need a card. I am going to use, I, it's a slimline card. So all of the measurements are on my blog tomorrow. But this, um, this piece here is going to go on the front of our card. So I'm going to move this in as far as it will go. Now I won't go right to the top. And I'm going to tell you why I won't go right to the top because right along the top is where we start to lose some of that uh, pretty detail. So it gets clear right there. So I'm only going to that top right there. And I'm using the distressed tile and we are going to use this again. So this is a 3D. So I'm gonna use the exact same setup as what I had. And we're gonna run that one through and we're going to do it from the other side. Now you want one here where um, you want something that has an all over pattern like this, okay? You don't want something that is sort of plain. Now when you go to put it in again, what you wanna try not to do is overlap where you have some of that embossing. This is how you can get a larger piece than what you normally would. So you can go all the way through and what you've got is you've created a piece 
that has embossing all the way. Now, yes, you can see a tiny little line here, but you can easily fix that. Also notice, because it ran through twice, it is just a little bit wonky. So these are our foam adhesive strips. They're a little bit thicker than uh, Stampin' Dimensionals. So just know that when you are um, using it. Now you can also decide which side you want. So if you want, this is a more the debossed side and this is the embossed side. So one of the sides may look a little less, uh, like it has a line in it. So I actually think I'm gonna put it on this side. So I cut these all the time. Okay, so I cut them so that they're not quite so long. And now I'm gonna pick these off and I'm just going to place them on. And one thing I always do on any card is I put one in the middle. So I've already scored this. And again, my measurements you can find on my blog. It'll be up tomorrow with an edited version of this video as well. And we're gonna place that right over top. So I have my little line on the right side of my card. And we are going to try and get that as centered as possible. That, I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back of our Celebrate. And I always like to use my Take Your Pick tool for this. Just seems a little bit easier for me if I can use that. So we are going to use some liquid glue on the back for that. And I'm just going to dab it on in a few different places. Now these, because they come pre-made, you can't uh, put on the adhesive sheets on the back of them. So I'm just gonna dab it on a little place. I am not going right out to the edges because I may wanna curl up the edges of the uh, wings of the butterfly. Let's put her here. This one is already curling on itself just because of the heat embossing. And this one we are going to put on the other side. I don't want them to be on the same angle. So I'm gonna angle this one up like this Place that down, give it a good a little bit of sticking power, take off all my backings on my dimensionals. We can put that on an angle or we can put it straight. I happen to think I like it a little bit straighter. So this is a classy card. We're not putting a lot of other types of things on here to fancy it up. We're just gonna decorate it like that. Let's put in some of our words, the best is yet to come. And I think we will also emboss those. So let's take that out for a moment. The best is yet to come. Let's try and get that as straight as possible. Card, it's got a few steps, sure. But if you were making this at home, um, you know, they would go together fairly quickly, especially if you did it in batches. So if you did your butterflies all together and made a few of those, and you could certainly do your, emboss your pieces of paper as well. You know, I'm gonna clean that first with my brush. because I've got some little spots because the embossing buddy did not come out of the bag. But what it does, it just gives you a lot more um, options with your embossing powders. So I'm just crisping up this edge here a little bit more. Let's put in our last butterfly on the edge. Now you could always use this butterfly on your envelope if you wanted. You would you don't have to put it on the inside. But any time that we can bring the outside of the card into the inside of the card, I just really like that. So we're going to go down here so you have lots of room to write. So let's put a couple of these on a few of these on, put one down here, and maybe we'll put one sort of up here, and another littler one, I think. Where should we put that? So all of that third one is always the challenge, right? So the idea on the third one, what I usually try and do is I keep it close to one of the other ones. So I'll either bring it down here and keep it fairly close, or I'll put it up here and bring it close. And it's just really what I, what my eye likes the most. And so I actually like it down here a little bit better than up top. Okay, so there's your card. Thanks very much for joining me. Please like the video and subscribe if you'd like to. Also join my email list where you can get exclusive ideas from me every week. Thanks very much. Have a great paper crafting day.